Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to welcome all of you here. Yes. Um, before we start, um, I would like to test my sound, the audio and the video. So everyone can um, can just uh, tell me if the sound and uh, the video is okay. You can just uh, type type in the chat board to let me know everything is fine. Then we can start. So can you see me here? Can you see me well? And can you hear my sound well? Okay, everything is okay. So, um, and before we start, I would also like you to, to type your, uh, your company name and your country in the chat board so that uh, we can know each other better and uh, we can also know who are here because it's uh, such a long time we haven't seen each other online. So it's a, it's a time that we can, uh, you know, just uh, know each other a little bit better on, on, the, on the line. You can just uh, type greetings or hello and to say, you know, greetings to everyone on the, on the line right now. Okay, so we can start now. Uh, thank you very much for participating in this webinar. My name is Sharon from the International uh, Marketing Department of Vino. And um, this is our first time of the year of the webinar. Um, so today we're gonna just talk about something different, set aside all the traditional ultrasounds. Uh, we have been talking a lot, uh, but today we're gonna talk about uh, something maybe you have not noticed because it's so teeny tiny. And uh, this is not the traditional ultrasound segment. This is uh, uh, way before, way before the, the clinical uh, ultrasound imaging. So we call it the preclinical uh, uh, pre research or the laboratory, uh, the laboratory research. So uh, before <coughs> we officially start, I would like to tell you, uh, I would like to um, inform some notes about this webinar. So this is a live webinar, uh, but a recording will be uploaded to Flying Sono. You can download our Flying Sono application and choose the training. Let me just, so this is a pass that you can review the webinar recording in case you, you just came, you, jo you just joined in the middle of the webinar or you wanted to review it after it. So go to Flying Sono and select training, the video playback and select the file named 2023 webinar. And you can check on next Monday. And uh, we will be muted all of the participants during the webinar. Uh, you can of course leave your uh, questions in the chat board, which is so welcomed throughout the presentation. And all of your questions will be answered uh, at the Q&A session, which is will be the fourth of uh, the, the final part. Um, and the estimation of this, dura uh, of this webinar will be around one hour, including about a 10 to 15 minutes Q&A part. Okay, you can take a, a screenshot of the video playback in case you forgot. Okay, so um, first of all, I'd like to share you about the agenda for today. We're gonna have five parts. So we start with a potential market to grow ultrasound business. This is a new part uh, added to the original plan because uh, you must be wondering why we are here, why we're talking about this niche market. So this part will answer you the questions. And of course, we're gonna talk about the application uh, ultrasound in, uh, of ultrasound in the clinical research and uh, introduction to our research laboratory ultrasound solution and with a live demo. And the final wrap up with all the questions to be answered. Okay. So 
let's first talk about uh, uh, the potential market to grow the ultrasound business. We're gonna have two parts. The first will be uh, an overview of the preclinical imaging market. We can take a look, look at what is uh, the status quo of this market right now and what is our opportunity. So the next part will be the potential, potentiality to grow the business of the ultrasound for us. So I'm gonna just uh, uh, switch off the video and then we can focus more on the presentation. Okay, so let's take a look at this preclinical imaging market. So the first question will be, what is the preclinical research? So this uh, research, preclinical research, of course, it means before the clinical. Uh, it is refers to the scientific in investigation that is conducted before the clinical trials in the humans. Um, usually involves the laboratory experiments and uh, the animal studies to test the safety and uh, the effectiveness of such as the new drugs, uh, so the medical equipment uh, and other some kind of the treatments. Um, so let's take first take a look at how big is this market. Um, actually, I'm quite surprised to see this market size um, from this, uh, uh, the, the market research, we can see from this year, the, the market size of this preclinical imaging the globally, it's around $520 million. And uh, with each year increasing at around 6% of the compound uh, average, uh, average compound growth rate from, from now to the next seven years. Um, how, how, how big is that? We, we, we haven't actually understand it, but if we calculate it according to the, the, the global ultrasound market, it is actually accounts for 7% of the global uh, ultrasound market. It's quite a big number. And uh, this is a total preclinical imaging. Of course, it includes a lot of uh, um, modalities, imaging modalities, such as the CT, such as MRI, such as PET, SPECT, and uh, the other multiple modality imaging and some optical imaging, of course, ultrasound and uh, photoacoustic imaging and so on and for some, some re regions and, and some service. Um, so if we just take uh, ultrasound imaging, just take it out, we can see the ultrasound, the ultrasound imaging is actually, it's quite, it's quite big. It's a, it's a almost like a 10%, 10% of this, uh, of this uh, preclinical imaging. So um, the ultrasound in the preclin preclinical imaging, it's a 520 and the preclin imaging is around uh, 10 times more. So if we just look at the ultrasound in the preclinical imaging, it's uh, already take 70%, 7% of the global ultrasound imaging. And uh, if we just uh, compared to the veterinary ultrasound imaging alone, it is, uh, so for this year, it is around $414 million, which is also very high growth, but you can compare the veterinary ultrasound to the ultrasound in preclinical imaging. As you can see, the market is it's very, very uh, size is almost the same, even bigger. So it, it is quite an uh, um, impressive market. And th this is a, a very big market. We, we haven't actually paying attention, but uh, I think from the next part, we can see why this market, we probably we can start to pay attention. Okay, so then we, after we take a look at the overview, so what is uh, the, the future? What is the forecast? Uh, let's see the forecast for the next seven years. There's a lot of uh, reasons that it grows so fast around the six uh, percent of the every the, the annual growth rate, according to many reasons, such as uh, the, the growing number of the investments, 
and funding in research and development. So um, you can see there's um, a lot of um, money coming into this market. Uh, of course, that's uh, because of the, as I said, this is a preclinical study uh, before the human trials. So as long as the human diseases are, is rising every year and uh, there is more, there is a lot of uh, investment will be, you know, invested, uh, will be invested in this preclinical um, segment. Um, and of course, the, the more and more, um, more and more like clinical research organizations and the pharmaceutical companies realize uh, that uh, um, you know the, the the adoption of this uh, this ultrasound as a non-invasive uh, is it's safe it's it's non-invasive it's uh, safe for the animals as well and also real time uh, so there there are more adoption for this ultrasound uh, in this involved imaging sec systems so the the overall in involving imaging segments it's also increasing such as we just talked about uh, like a ct mri and a pet and a fluoroscopy those things this is involved in in vivo imaging and the ultrasound is one of them and also have uh, benefits with non-radiation and and uh, real time and, and cost effective. So um, this is uh, the, the third reasons. And the last reason is uh, the fast uh, technological advancements in this ultrasound imaging, um, such as, uh, you know, the, 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 the ultrasound, uh, the, the contrast agents uh, development and the molecular uh, imaging and uh, high frequency probes uh, you applied in the ultrasound, uh, those expanded expanded its capabilities and potential applications in this uh, preclinical imaging. Um, on the right side, that we can take a look at uh, the the potential market. We even look. Uh, we even study. Uh, who, who are the biggest markets there? So we can see North America and uh, Europe that takes, um, you know, more than 50%, it's more half. Uh, and why those, uh, uh, those regions have uh, such um, a big market share? It's a half market share. That's because in those, uh, uh, such as Europe um, uh, and also North America, Canada, uh, they have well-developed research uh, in infrastructure and uh, many skilled professors are available in the market. And of course, the governments, they have money, so they will give uh, man many initiatives to the organizations. Um, and uh, those governments and those facilities, they have higher purchasing power um, along with the government support. That's why those um, regions, those developed uh, company, uh, countries, they have um, high, you know, increasing a uh, high market share in this preclinical imaging. Uh, but we also take a look at the Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific is quite standing out. It's almost a one fifth, 20%. 21%. And why is that? Um, as we know, the Asia Pacific, Pacific, they have more population, of course. Um, and uh, the, the government or the, the, the total environment, they have more favorable regulatory guidelines. And, and of course, uh, the cost will be less. Uh, the, the manpower uh, labor costs, uh, it's less. And, and also, they do also some outsourcing industry, such as China, uh, such as India. So those reasons, they bring more opportunities for the Asia Pacific region. Um, so those three regions, we can pay attention, such as Europe and uh, so the Asia and Pacific. That also explains why right now the China market for this preclinical ultrasound solution is quite of, uh, it's kind of booming right now. That explains. Um, and uh, the, the, the picture that I put on this here, it's, a, it's also some kind of the new um, technology uh, I would like to highlight uh, with you. Uh, this is a very, very new niche uh, frontieria technology we call a super uh, resolution microscopy imaging, SRMI. So in the clinical term, this is ultrasound localization microscopy. Um, this is a new technology, um, 
right now it's, it's still on the trial phase and we are gonna to um, release this technology SRMI with uh, with Altimus Nae um, in, in near future. Uh, why? Because um, this, uh, this technology requires a very, very uh, different um, requirement for ultrasound. This is a completely different uh, uh, platform. Uh, we call it ultrafast platform. You know, the, the, the Muse platform is based, it's, it's, ba it's built based on this uh, ultrafast platform, uh, which is available on the Altimus 9E. Um, it, it, this technology, we call it SRMI, this technology overcome the diffraction limit of ultrasound imaging. And let me explain you with, an, with some numbers. Uh, for instance, the conventional B forming, it's uh, around uh, 20 to 100 frame rates per second. So this is a uh, very average right now we're using, but uh, the ultra fast B forming, they, they, can, they can speed up, they can achieve 20,000 frame rates, which is 30 times much more higher than the conventional one. So it supports, uh, you know, the 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 the, the super the ultra fast frame rates uh, required. Um, also, result in uh, much more details, much more information we can obtain from the ultrasound uh, sound waves. So uh, this enables uh, the visualization of uh, the structure that were previously can never be seen with the traditional ultrasound. So this is the picture that we captured with, uh, with a mouse and also a rat's brain. So we call it transcranial transcranial imaging uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, the counter the the contra the contrast agent we call it the, with the contrast imaging and uh, can gives you the visualization of the neurology the neuro uh, you know the neurology of uh, of the of the of the mouse and we use a very high frequency because uh, it's very superficial uh, with a new high frequency linear probe so this is a quite a niche uh, technology will be available with uh, with an IE, and uh, in the future we will also apply this uh, with uh, the preclinical solution. Okay. So, what is the potential? We 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 have already take a look at the how, how the big size how how the how the big of the market size of the preclinical ultrasound imaging, and also the also the the, the reasons why it's going to be booming in the future, and uh, why it is important for us. So what does it matter for us? Um, of course, in conclusion, that's because it's a promising market, and uh, with a uh, with a very uh, high increase forecast in the future, and uh, we have. Uh, Basically, uh, right now, a very, uh, a very complete, a very complete solution uh, for this market. So we have a middle range with the portable system and a high range for a uh, stationary system. And uh, with Altimus Nai, will be available uh, with a premium system. So this is um, a complete specialized for this preclinical imaging ultrasound solution. As we know, this market it's very high requirement for the resolution and temporal resolution and spatial resolution. So the, the quality of the ultrasound, they require very high. So they need basically at least middle to high range. And those we have all. And uh, the, the, the China example has give, has give us many um, experience and uh, many, uh, you know, many um, inputs for us to learn. Um, it is possible that we can also to try in the international market, as we can see the Europe um, and also the other Asian Pacific markets has quite a big potential. And uh, we also have a, a dedicated veterinary team to work on this project. So this is a daddy, this is a team. They have an application specialist. They have a project manager. The the the, the, the and also the product manager. They have uh, um, they have all the people only specialized for the for this uh, kind of application, veterinary and uh, and the laboratory uh, to to customize to you know develop our solution. Um, and of course, because this is a very special demand for those researchers, and uh, they have um, 
so not all the ultrasound can do this. Only a few ultrasounds globally, they have this solution, which means it, it is very high profit. Uh, it is much higher than the average, uh, than, the, than any traditional ultrasounds. Uh, and uh, of course, low competition because, um, you know, not every ultrasound they can do ultra fast. So uh, not every ultrasound they have a super, you know, um, high frequency uh, linear and with with all this uh, with all this laboratory solution. So we have low competition and with a high profit. So which means it is a ready market. And as long as we have the opportunity, we can start to to try maybe in your region. So the part, the next part will be introducing the application introduction of the ultrasound in the clinical research. We will start uh, with the basics. So we talk about the basics of the ultrasound imaging in this area and what is our ultrasound solution for this laboratory, uh, you know, laboratory re research. So basics, uh, we first take to collect to uh, take a good look at uh, the purpose. Uh, what is for? What is for this preclinical research, and uh, why it is important of the high frequency ultrasound uh, in this area, and uh, what is the common acquisition modes for this for this res uh, preclinical research? The purpose of the ultrasound imaging for this clinical preclinical research. Uh, you know, ultrasound is a non-invasive imaging technology. So that they, they use the sound waves to visualize the internal organs and tissues. So with this ultrasound, we can see very small structures of the, in the living animals, uh, making them very valuable to study the disease progression and evaluating potential treatments for the human. And the common applications, usually we can divide it like cardiovascular imaging, which is the number one. And why is that? Uh, as we know, um, you know, in the clinical imaging, the animal models, are models usually used to study the mechanism underlying human disease. And we know the cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of the death. So the word why. So, um, why the cardiovascular imaging we use for this preclinical research is very important. It's it, because it's it is very very important, and it can be seen to monitor to evaluate uh, the cardiac uh, function, uh, the vascular structure, uh, the blood flow, and uh, some tissue perfusion. Um, we can. Uh, we can use uh, the, the researchers can gain uh, valuable insights uh, into this disease progression, some treatment uh, response and the potential uh, therapies. And uh, the second is the tumor, the tumor imaging, which is also very important for us to use like uh, ultra like a con contrast uh, imaging. Um, and neuroimaging, neuroimaging, we can use to to evaluate, uh, you know, the neuro the the, the neuro uh, disease of the human, which is kind of the, uh, very complicated because it involves in the brain. Um, and uh, the in the before we talk about the SRMI, uh, uh, SRMI, which is um, which is a new technology, will be available to study the neuroscience for the human. Um, and also the reproductive imaging, uh, such as uh, like ovaries, testes, and uh, uh, some embryos development, and some tumors, some abdom uh, abdominal, uh, uh, some abnormal abnormalities of of uh, of the reproductive system. Uh, so it can evaluate the efficacy of reproductive treatments such as infertility drugs and artificial uh, instrumentation for the human. Okay, so why this is important for us to use high frequency? Of course, we understand uh, we, we have to use ultrasound to study this uh, anatomy of this, uh, these animals. Um, that's why we need uh, we need to see the anatomy very clearly and uh, 
compared to the human, you know, the anatomy, anatomical targets um, of, of, the, of the laboratory animals, they are very, very small. They are, they are much smaller than human. Um, we, can, we can take a look at the, the, the picture right here. This is, uh, uh, this is the carotid artery of, uh, of the rat. And you can see the depth here. It's uh, only 0 0.3 centimeter depth in depth. But to what is the human? The human carotid artery is around 2 to 3. So which means this is only 10%, um, you know, in depth compared to the human. So it is very, very small. And when you look at this anatomy of the, of, of, of the rat, of the rat, I'm sorry, this is, a, this is a mice. I'm sorry, this is a mice. So the picture we show here is mice because mice is a, it's a little bit smaller. It's, a, it's a, you know, half smaller than, than the rat. Um, this, is, this is a rat. Um, you can see the anatomy there of the artery. Uh, even, even, even this is also much smaller much, much smaller than our human. And um, so in, in, this, in this concept, uh, we have, uh, when we talk about uh, the sound waves of the, of the frequency that we're talking about uh, such as, such as uh, the, shorter, the shorter waves, uh, the shorter wavelengths, the, the shorter penetration, the good resolution of the high frequency. Um, for instance, uh, because of the high frequency that we can see much clearly in the spatial resolution, but the compromise is for the uh, the shorter penetration. We have seen this. We have three three dots here, but with a high frequency on the ultrasound, we can see uh, clearly separate two separate entities with the high frequency. Uh, in the country, if we use low frequency on the same image, because of the low frequency, we have long, longer wavelengths, uh, long, longer or deeper penetration, uh, but the resolution is very poor. So in the ultrasound image, you can barely see three separate dots. You can only see maybe one dot in, in general, uh, but as long as we know this um, um, rat or mouse is so much smaller, the penetration is around um, up to two centimeter, which means we have to see very superficial. So that's why we need high frequency probes for the laboratory animals. Um, and the most uh, commonly used frequency for the ultrasound, it's around 10 to 50 megahertz. Uh, the, usually they will use 20 to 40 for the most. Um, right now we have a 20 to 30 megahertz. And uh, in the future, we will have um, a higher frequency megahertz, uh, which is in development, specialized for this preclinical. Very, very small, such as, uh, such as mouse. Okay, um, according, uh, talking about the ultrasound sound waves and uh, let's uh, have, a, have an understanding about the acquisition modes. Usually we have four kind of the modes, uh, you know, we use the most. For, for the first, we need uh, the B mode, which is the anatomical structure we can see clearly the, the anatomy of the, of the animal and the M mode um, enables us to see the moving structure along the line. So such as the moving structure of the carotid, uh, a, a moving structure of the cardiovascular, um, some valve structure, some valve movement, and uh, uh, also the power Doppler, the color, the Doppler modes, to evaluate the velocity and direction of the blood. Um, sometimes we also will use uh, contrast imaging to vasculate, to see the vasculature of, or even microvasculature of the tissues and organs in these small animals. Um, those are some sample images. Uh, this, this, this picture can help us understand 
uh, how how big how what is the size of the of the of the rats? We can we can see the the size here is the it's about a one centimeter length and a half half centimeter uh, uh, in, in in the width. Uh, it's uh, it's it's almost uh, compared to your little thumbnail. So the your pinker fi your pinky finger size. Uh, I think it's it's uh, it's for the women pinky uh, finger size, which is very very small. Um, and what does it look like in the ultrasound? So this is a live image of the rat, the rat long axis, of the image, um, the 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 frame, um, the the rat's heartbeat can up to five hundred to six hundred uh, per second uh, per minute. So uh, which is much faster. Than the human, it's almost five to six times faster than the human. So um, when we talk about the laboratory ultrasound, it has to have at least very important two factors. First, we're talking about uh, you know the resolution, spatial re resolution. The second is the high frame rates. So those are the two major factors to evaluate the quality of the preclinical ultrasounds. And this is a red carotid uh, color Doppler. And uh, this is the end mold and uh, the kidney of the rat. Okay, so, so much for the basics of the ultrasound. And we also understand the, the, the market, the potentiality for us. I hope that you're interested to know, to knowing further about uh, the ultrasound solution our solution for this new market. So the next part will be inviting Barrett uh, as our uh, clinical application specialist to give us the introduction of the ultrasound solution for the laboratory animals. So let's just invite Barrett. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, uh, I will share my uh, screen. Okay, uh, for the laboratory animals uh, applications, uh, we have uh, several um, several filters. Uh, for example, for the cardiac physiology uh, model laboratory research for the angel ology. <coughs> Pastor Ollinger laboratory research for the brain physiology research, developmental research biopsy, RQ Ollinger research, uh, physiology study of abdominal organs. Uh, we will uh, uh, we will go through one by one. Uh, this is the uh, cardiac uh, study here. Uh, we can. We can get uh, the performance rapture, uh, repeatable echocardiograph in small to larger animals with result with resolution up to 23 megahertz with the faster frame rates. The perfect solution for uh, visualizing the dynamic of the rapture beating rodent head. So in here. Uh, we can get uh, the M model for the right heart in here. Uh, we can uh, do the EF measurement, EF measurement in here. Yes, this is the EF measurement. Mm, next. Uh, in here, we also can do the uh, cartilager, cartilager phase. Physiology model laboratory research uh, by the uh, strain imaging. Uh, in here, uh, the strain image we can uh, we can get the evaluation uh, cardiac strain image. Uh, in here, this is the uh, short view short X view uh, heart. This is a non X view heart. Uh, we can do the um, we can do the C, uh, C, C corolla, C corolla and uh, deformation globally or regularly. 
Uh, this is the Alaster uh, features. Uh, this is the Angulology, uh, Pathology Laboratory Research. Uh, we can use the abdominal artery and the cartilage absorbs scular rotical blockers in Mars. Uh, here is the the artery, the upper in here. Here is uh, for the uh, cartilage artery. Uh, we can get we can use the uh, linear probe to scanning this uh, artery. Uh, in uh, use our uh, laboratory uh, use our neighbor neighbor um, use our ultrasound uh, protector. And here is is the, is the mm, tissue, the the vessel, the abnormal vessel tissue. In here, yeah. Uh, we can we can do the detector cross sectional images of blood of vessels. Actually, measure the thickness of the artery wall of experimental animals. The size of the lumen and measure the internal major and advantage of the visual wall. Uh, in the right side is the uh, mass oil region of scanning. Uh, this is a, a very good, very good visual model. Uh, this is uh, uh, the rabbit cartilage artery. Uh, in here, in here we can see uh, a very small uh, placer. in here. Mm. We also can get the uh, abnormal the vessel models in here. Uh, this is uh, a lesser features. It's uh, the brain biology uh, research. Uh, we can use uh, uh, our sound uh, machine to get the blood flow, perfusion, oxygen saturation, and more flow. Yeah, in here, you can see this is the 2D image, and also we can get the color flow for the brain. Also, we can do the um, partial Weber Doppler. Uh, we can get the the spectra in here. Uh, this is the uh, developmental research biopsy. Uh, we can uh, use this uh, research on the uh, embryo molecule development development of ex experimental animals. Use its uh, built-in functional models can realize the developmental research for early embryo embryonic development to, to newborn and adulthood. Uh, in here, we can see uh, that this is a cardiac function evaluation of 15-day uh, older fetal, uh, fetal rats. Uh, this is for uh, this is uh, also is, uh, is for um, developmental research biopsy. Uh, this is a celebrate blood flow images of fetal rats. And then here, uh, this is the umbilical artery spectrum. Uh, the the oncology oncology research is very important uh, uh, for for the medic for the medicine uh, company. So uh, we can use uh, the neighbor, neighbor uh, researcher, uh, the neighbor protector uh, to get the tumor uh, tissue uh, actually detected without any markers uh, and each uh, arbitrary radio distance area and volume can be measured uh, by ultrasound machine and tumor Bio specificity can also be studied using elastograph and composite image techniques. Uh, in here, this is the 2D image for the tumor tissue. In here, 
uh, we can see is a tissue, a tumor tissue uh, below the skin, below the skin. Uh, we have a we have a lesser, uh, very important features in, uh, on the tumor study. Uh, it is we flash, uh, we flash. Actually, mm, uh, we uh, we are the the first water comer comer realized realize that ultrasound cavitation thread uh, our Miller machine. Yeah, we have the multiple tumor models uh, verification and increase the blood flow perfusion area by 30 to 19 percent enhance the tumor blood flow uh, greater than four hours uh, here you can see this is uh, uh, this is the v flash uh, before the v flash we can see this here it means uh, it means there's neck of the bladder flow, there's neck of the perfusion on the on this tumor tissue. Uh, after we use the flash function, okay, in here now you can see uh, the the micro bubble come here, so we can get we can increase the blood blood flow perfusion here. It is very uh, it is very useful for uh, clinical um, research. Uh, we also uh, can use this function on the basic research, for example, for radio strap and the chemical and the camera strap and the general transfer transfection and so on. Uh, also, ultrasound uh, chemical uh, camera strap also can uh, use on the uh, several cancers uh, syrup. Uh, in here, we mm, designed uh, we designed a uh, uh, very uh, friendly mm, user interface for for the wave flash. Mm. Here, here is a uh, show the different sound pressure uh, display. In here, we can show. Okay, uh, the next is the physiological study of abdominal organs. High resolution, two dimension uh, image of a liver, kidney, intestinal uh, tract, and other tissues, and organs of uh, various animals, such as rats and um, mice. Real time detection of flow, uh, blood flow and perfusion image on paper. So uh, this is uh, the right labor. This is the muscle kidney. Yeah, we can use uh, the color flow uh, to get uh, the different perfusion imaging. Uh, the next part is the part three. Uh, I will in uh, introduction our window research laboratory ultrasound solution. Uh, in window uh, ultrasound solution, laboratory ultrasound solution, we we have uh, uh, two uh, two type of uh, machine. One is the culture based D at hundred sixteen level. Uh, that is the portable machine. It's D six level, uh, and also I. I will introduce uh, introduce the platform and the recommendation progress, and also I will share some uh, testimonials uh, from a uh, China market. Okay, this is the uh, D eight hundred sixteen level. This is the D six level. Uh, this is a portable machine. Uh, <laughs> Our um, our cut cut uh, our um, D six D eight hundred sixteen uh, number. It's uh, powered by the that machine is powered by the velocity platform. Uh, this is a, a very advanced B forming correction technology. So uh, this is a velocity platform. Uh, we can do the several uh, image pro 
for CC uh, in here, then we can get uh, a platter, uh, we can get a Eiffel platform and uh, uh, finally to get the high resolution and high penetration uh, ultrasound image. Uh, this platform uh, have the different, uh, uh, have several uh, short, uh, several um, advantages in here. So that the first day is the time resolution is uh, three times than the traditional ultrasound machine. Uh, uh, no, it's uh, three times uh, than our IF data, uh, the, gen the first generation uh, platform. Uh, the processing power is three times than the first generation. And the data transfer rate is uh, 12 times uh, than the first generation. <clears throat> so uh, we are uh, all, uh, we, we know the ultrasound machine uh, always uh, include the, the, um, the 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 machine and the uh, progress. Uh, so we have the cutting editor transducer technology here. Uh, thanks for this technology, we can uh, get uh, uh, get a very wider uh, brain, wider wider frequency brain problem, and to to cover the cell cover the such a, uh, animal such a naturally animals from um, muscle writer and uh, to to horse in here uh, normally we uh, we uh, we can uh, we um, use the two the linear problem on the um, on the scan on the scanning for the laboratory uh, laboratory research uh, this is our uh, second generation wider brain and your ultra high frequency transducers uh, x10 to 23 linear and x6 to 16 linear. Um, this problem can support to scan the abdominal and the cartilage from mouse and the abdominal cartilage for the rest. So uh, this. Uh, Proper will be uh, will be have a very uh, very good resolution for the uh, for the mm, uh, near field, and also we can uh, use the this proper to get the more penetration uh, performance uh, imagery for the rats. And this is our D eight hundred sixty lab. Uh, for this uh, uh, model, we have a. We have a bigger uh, LED monitoring here, and uh, uh, the bigger touch screen with high sensitivity supports uh, sterile uh, global operation. And also uh, for this uh, counter panel, we can support the four-way floating. Uh, in here, we can support uh, the five active proper ports in here. So. Uh, basically, we have uh, the splendor, splendor features in here are powered by the uh, revolutionary uh, velocity technology, ultra high to low frequency, investable artery stabilis measurement PWV tissue track with uh, quantified, quantitative analysis, string and string range, range. comprehensive cardiac measurement. Contrast the enhancement, enhanced ultrasound image with quantitative analysis. Microbiome measured ultrasound, cavitation strapping. And this is our portable uh, lab, uh, lab uh, machine, the D6 lab machine. Uh, we can support the customized for your research needs. Uh, in here, we also can support a uh, uh, fifteen point six uh, uh, inch high resolution LED monitoring. Here, yeah? we can support uh, the 
uh, touch screen on our portable machine. So it is very, uh, very useful um, for steering, steering clover operation and the pregnancy uh, transducer with three extensive proper connection. Uh, for V6, uh, for D6 never, we have uh, uh, several uh, features in here. Uh, we have the, uh, for this monitor, um, it's powered by the advanced IFB forming clickers with no information loss to reserve more clinical details. After high to low frequency, extensive labor animals, ab abdominal and cardiac measurement. Uh, we guide the magnetic to the needle navigation for biopsy, tissue tracking with quantitative analysis and screen and screen rate, um, VCQ intuitive and an X ray indication for echocardiographic measurement, and also support the CW uh, Doppler. Uh, this is our flying solo. Uh, with uh, uh, with these features, we can do the some remote ultrasound uh, solutions in here. Mm. So it is uh, very useful uh, with, uh, user, uh, useful for some uh, mm, research department uh, because uh, they have a uh, several mm, several arch department. Mm. So need to share the uh, data. Uh, <clears throat> okay, the next I will share. Uh, uh, I net net move. To, uh, I will share some standard of image uh, for the laboratory research. And uh, this is for the monkey uh, heart. Uh, it's the M model for the monkey heart, and this is the TDI TDI model. And this is the abdominal beam model for the gallbladder, liver. And this is the right kidney CBI uh, compressed bubble image. And this is a right short X cardiac. This is a right non X cardiac. Uh, and also, we can support uh, the advanced uh, um, cardio or uh, Diagnosis, cardio diagnosis, for example, for the uh, strain imaging here. And this is uh, for the uh, M model, the right M model. This is a uh, right kidney B model. And also, we can do uh, the right uh, cartilage artery scanning here. Yeah. Uh, this is our. Uh, this is our laboratory, uh, laboratory uh, customer sites uh, share the uh, some imaging here, uh, uh, share some pictures in here. Uh, we have uh, uh, sending uh, several models, several uh, uh, laboratory machine to uh, uh, many university uh, researcher laboratory research in here. You can see. Uh, and also, uh, they have uh, several party participator the papers in here in the national per, per clinical research in here. Okay, uh, next uh, we will um, go uh, move to the uh, live the demo to do the scanning. Okay, Jenny. Okay, this is a a, a right here. Uh, this is a special uh, plan. Yeah. We can do uh, support the ECG function here. Good. Uh, freeze. Thank you. Freeze. 
Okay, so in here, this is the right uh, uh, heart uh, long x non x view. Yeah, we can uh, we can see it very clear. And this is the average. This is the uh, left mm, left uh, picture. This is the left ventric left ventricular ventriculary. Okay, okay. Uh, please uh, show us uh, the M order M order for this. Okay, freeze, freeze. So uh, in here, uh, we can do the um, LV study match in here. We can get the EF. Uh, yes, it's uh, uh, actually it's, it's, it's similar with uh, the humor uh, LV study measure, measure the severs is the same. Okay. Seven. When we get the when we get the um, image the M model, we can uh, af when, after we, uh, measure we can save this image. Okay. Uh, so that's the next one. Thank you. Yes, this is a, a shorter X view. Short X view. Yes, we can see it's a very clear, uh, harsh, short view, short view. Yeah. We also can <clears throat> use the short view to uh, to get a M model image. Yes, freeze. Okay. We we can do the um, the same measurement for the LV study here. Yes. Okay. Save image. Okay. Okay. Let's go on for the the and for the card there. Okay. Uh, actually, this is this is is for the uh, four chamber. The app the the app view the app view four chambers for for rats. Yeah. In here we can uh, we we can get the uh, the multi waiver uh, Doppler the multi waiver Doppler um, spectra in here. Uh, this is the E waiver and this is the a waiver. E waiver, A waiver. Yeah, we can do the uh, measurement to get the velocity, both velocities here. Okay. Okay, this is the uh, the artery, the artery arch, the artery arch in here. This one. Yes. Uh, in here we can we can uh, uh, do the the measurement uh, to analyze the um, the stress the stain losses ratio in here. Uh, 
uh, we will scan the cartridge for the red red cartridge. Yes, in here. Yes, the, uh, yes. Can you show show to me the the archery the 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 ICA and uh, ECA? This is the CCA. Yeah. When we get uh, the artery here, we can do the uh, diameter, uh, the measure. Okay. Next. Uh, now uh, we we will scan scan the red red kidney, the red yeah this is the red kidney. Uh, we can get uh, the very very clear the kidney border in here, and uh, also we can do the color flow uh, to to get the kidney perfusion uh, status in here uh please turn off the turn turn off the the color flow 关掉彩色, 关掉彩色, 先关掉彩色. okay okay now turn on the color flow yes uh yes in here we can see the uh, we have a very a uh, very nice sensitivity the color flow in here uh, and also we can get uh, mm, several several micro several micro vessels vessels in here uh, this is uh, it means that we uh, our our protector our laboratory our sounder have a very good uh, uh color sensitivity and uh, uh spatial uh, resolution on the, the micro vessel in here okay freeze thank you okay save this image uh Please, uh, please scan, uh, scan the liver, liver first. And this probe is our 10 to 23 linear probe. Yes, it it is a. Uh, uh, very nice for the small animals. Yeah, in here, uh, this is the uh, rat liver uh, to the image. We can see it's very clear. The liver capsule in here and uh, the vessel, internal vessel in here. This is the pot vein. Uh, pot vein. Yeah, uh, maybe a, can you show to us the color flow of a liver? Yes, you can see the color sensitivity and the, the color penetration and the the color uh, spatial resolution. Yeah, phrase. Thank you, phrase. Uh, yes. All right, thank you very much, Barrett, and our colleague from the China veterinarian team. Um, so we have uh, understand uh, the solution, and we also just to take a look at uh, uh, the real performance of the the the, the D six uh, lab, which is uh, the laboratory uh, specialized ultrasound, uh, the portable system. We just uh, 
demonstrated. So please be noted that um, all this, uh, all this kind of the uh, you know um, operation should be conducted with uh, appropriate anesthesia and uh, sterile condition to to lower the risk uh, for 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 the for our laboratory animals and welfare of the animals. Okay, so. Let's move to the next part. Okay. Oh, sorry. So the next part will be our question and answer session. And we have some uh, um, we have a colleague, let me see. Okay, so we have one question so far. And of course you can also leave your questions. Uh, any questions you may, have, uh, you may have in your mind to ask us um, and we can discuss everything now. Uh, one question to answer biology. Is this uh, SRMI available already? Uh, right now, we are still on the trial uh, phase because this is a, a recently developed um, uh, technology and we have achieved quite good results in, in some uh, hospitals. And the next part, the next um, plan will be further optimize this uh, feature and we will be um, released uh, with, uh, uh, with ultra, uh, Ultimus Nae, and we start to in human, to have it in, in human. Uh, and of course, this is a um, very preclinical uh, product it will be different from our current portfolio. So we will let you know if you're interested in this kind of the solution, okay? So do you have any other questions? So we have talked about uh, the solution for this laboratory research, which is very simple. Um, so the products will be D60, D600, uh, D860 lab. And this is a stationary product. And uh, the portable ultrasound is a D6 lab. And we, have only, we need only two probes, uh, X6 to 16L and X10 to 23L. And with the ECG, of course. So this is basically uh, the, you know, the, 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 the complete laboratory ultrasound solution. And in the future, we will also have the Altimus Nae available to add it in this portfolio to have it um, a premium ultrasound for this solution. Okay, so let me give you, um, let's just uh, make a conclusion. So what is uh, the, the reasons that uh, Vino's laboratory ultrasound stand out? I give you four, I give you five, five reasons. Uh, the first, we have a very specialized, the laboratory specialized, total solution, uh, including one stationary high-end and uh, middle range um, port portable solution. And in the future, we'll have a premium stationary. So basically cover, uh, cover the, the, the requirement of this market. And with this uh, specialized uh, ultrasound, we have a lab specialized presets, including uh, also including the, the lab specialized measurements, especially for the cardiovascular measurements, which are which is free included in this uh, in this in this product. Okay, the the second is very cost effective lab. Uh, so two products uh, can have stationary or portable, uh, portable scenarios and uh, with, uh, with um, you know, um, especially the D6 lab, which is very cost effective uh, for a lot of uh, researchers who has uh, not much 
budget, but also require a high you know, performance or specialized laboratory ultrasound with maybe a little bit uh, a limited space and we can have the D6 lab for them. Um, and if they need a high, you know, higher requirement uh, for some kind of ultrasound therapy, like a V-Flash, we have D6, D, D600, uh, 860 lab available for them. Um, the third reason is a worry-free service um, with a remote ultrasound solution flying. So now we can provide training and the pre uh, before and after the cells. We can, um, how, we can have our team available to give you remote demo or remote optimization, uh, or even you know the, 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 the professors or the they can communicate with their other colleagues in different locations with uh, this um, remote solution. So the next uh, highlights will be continuous optimization for the better using experience. Um, by having a dedicated veterinarian uh, team, we can have a lot of customizable functions available for, uh, for some kind of the uh, special package for, for, the, for the researchers. So the last and but not the least is the easy and regular software upgrade, which is very important for those uh, researchers, uh, for those users that we provide uh, them the constant and uh, you know um, easy upgrade of the software to secure their uh, investment and also keeping to keep the system up to the age you know of the imaging excellence to make them uh, investment is uh, can 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 be used for quite a long time. Okay. Okay, so far this is all we have today and we hope that uh, you enjoyed this uh, session. I enjoy a lot myself and very nice to see you all here. And uh, just in case some of you uh, joined in the middle, uh, we have the, the video replay available next Monday. You can go to the flying up uh, download or just go to the app Flying Sono and check the training and you will find our video playback in the 2023 20, uh, webinar fire. Um, if you have also any questions, you can always leave your leave your uh, email or any questions to us. Thank you, Henry. It's nice to, to see you and uh, yeah, to see many friends here today. Thank you all to have your time with us and uh, hope you enjoy our presentation. And we hope that uh, this could give us some insights, you know, some something new and uh, some new possibilities. Uh, maybe it will be around the corner and we know uh, what to, to catch when the opportunity comes. Um, and also give us, uh, you know, an, an open mind uh, and another, you know, a specter for, for different, you know, for different uh, market opportunities. Thank you all for having us today and uh, we, we wish you well and hope to see you soon next time. Take care. Bye-bye everyone. <laughs>